All right, so first I'll introduce my Christmas tree that my mother sent through the post. So this is a lovely little Christmas tree with some woodland animals. And this is all very important for meditation. I didn't really believe it in the past, but two of my first teachers said that the world can be divided into those who like teddy bears and those who don't. They're the ones who are coming to visit soon. And uh, at the time I thought, that's weird. I'm not sure I like teddy bears, but I liked them very much. And now I understood it as I'm getting older and a bit more silly. So these are the little woodland creatures on the tree. And uh, it's quite cute. We also have lots of plants here. And uh, I can understand why plants can be used to develop meta toward because they're also like little beings that need certain types of care. So it's very nice to have these things to look after. But anyway, just a little bit of festivity from my mother, basically, because she really likes Christmas. I'm not so keen, but I think it can help to have like little fairy lights and little teddy bears and plants around. So anyway, that hasn't got a lot to do with Meta, but who knows? <laughs> Sometimes it does. I also have a beautiful bear here and he is actually from Australia and he has a Noongar name called Jerapin. Jerapin means uh, happiness in the Noongar language which Christina knows about because she's from that part of the world. So uh, he's very nice as well. Hey, hey. Anyway, I must be in a silly mood today, but we are going to do some meta practice and it's nice to start with a smile. So part of uh, a right endeavor or right effort in the path is to actually um, try and bring up some wholesome qualities in the mind. And we can do that not only on the meditation cushion, but in our daily life, just by the way that we relate to one another, the way that we um, regard ourselves as well, like trying to notice the positive, wholesome qualities that are there in our heart. And if we don't see them yet, at least we can recognize those qualities that we really uh, revere and wish to develop. And that in itself is very beautiful. You know, all of us here are inclining our minds towards peace, towards loving kindness. That's why you've turned up today. We're inclining our minds towards goodness. We want to learn to be worthy of trust. We want to be good friends to others, good friends to ourselves. And these are really, really beautiful qualities that we can nurture in our hearts. And obviously, I see all of that in all of you, even those who I don't know, because you wouldn't be here otherwise. But it's still important to reflect on that and to see them for ourselves within ourselves. And that way they start to grow. So my lovely guest here asked me a question uh, recently about how to reconcile this um, seeming paradox between right effort, making effort in our lives and on the cushion perhaps, and letting go in meditation. And I think that this is kind of the juncture between the two this place where we develop wholesome qualities in our hearts. But we can do this throughout the day in everything we do, in our uh, speech and bodily action, particularly in relationship to others. And then when we do sit down to meditate, some of that, of course, carries across because we feel good about ourselves and our, our lives. We feel that we've done our best, even if we've made mistakes. We're willing to be honest to those mistakes and, you know, continue on the path. Don't give up and reflect on those qualities within ourselves. And this is one of the ways we can bridge our life in the world with our life on the cushion, which is still in the world. We're still very much here, right? We're not dissociating and going somewhere else. We bring everything that we've created in our minds with us. Um, but we can also incline the mind in a particular direction by sitting down and bringing up some of the blessings of our lives or some of the goodness in our hearts or even the goodness that we see in others. And I think that's very much where metta can be a powerful tool. So we can incline our mind in this direction and then we're able to let go because the mind has already been pointed a certain way and then we can trust it to follow that particular course. And of course, with the meta practice, the purpose of the phrases that we use are just to keep on nudging the mind in that direction. So we don't need to overuse them. We don't need to say, come on, may I be happy? May I be happy? May I be happy? <laughs> because that's just too much force and too much wishing, maybe even too much will. But we can just gently encourage ourselves, you know, may I be happy? May I develop contentment or whatever it is? And then those words just kind of resonate inside. They resonate in our hearts and the heart, the mind can follow that direction. 
So we don't need to say these things constantly to ourselves, but it can be helpful in the beginning to remind ourselves what we're here to do, the beauty of our intentions, the goodness in our hearts, and also just gently keep the mind on track during the metta. And when the mind and the body are full of uh infused if you like with a sense of friendliness and softness and it can be subtle as well right we're not looking for kind of big bang or <laughs> some kind of you know flashing lights or high energy state we can just look for that sense of softness and ease within ourselves and then that gives us a sense of trust and being able to let the mind continue along that track so that's just a little uh introduction but we will do some meta meditation together. And as usual with these uh, practices, they are suggestions, they're invitations, they're not instructions to get right. So if for you, the instruction is maybe too much or your meditation is already going on its own, um, you can just let the words go and trust your mind. Um, if something else would work better for you, then please stay with that. But it's an invitation just to cultivate a little bit of metta in the heart today and see where that takes us. <clears throat> so I'm going to begin with metta to my throat and have a little bit more of my lovely cup of tea. And I invite you to do so too as part of getting comfortable. So whether you need to clear your throat or have a sip or shift your position, if you're really tired, you might even want to lie down or sit against a wall. Because some of us are just on the go, you know, and it's nice to take a pause and really ask our body what it needs right now. It's quite nice to see some of you have disappeared from the screen. <laughs> Maybe you're lying down or just slouching and that's wonderful <clears throat> and please excuse me if my voice drops out at all you don't need to inform anyone um it's just the nature of this computer at the moment it seems to drop out now and again <clears throat> but you won't miss anything. I mean, you can, you know, the mind knows what to do. And I will be getting some headphones very kindly offered to me this morning, soon enough. So when you're ready and you found a comfortable posture, please close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, the sensations in the body may become even more vivid and apparent to you. So just receiving that information from the body and responding by making yourself even more comfortable, perhaps adjusting the limbs or clothing, evenly distributing your weight between your thighs or your buttocks. <clears throat> Paying particular attention to your spine. Sometimes I feel tired and it's most comfortable to lean and not have a completely straight spine, but today I feel like it's nice to just pull the small of the back in very slightly and sit upright and roll the shoulders back. If there's a bit of stiffness or tightness in your back or your shoulders, you're welcome to stretch a little bit, move the head from side to side. <clears throat> and allowing yourself to really arrive, arriving into your body with the breath. Maybe breathing in a slightly long breath and breathing out fully, settling down. Letting your body be held by the ground. Mm. 
And relaxing your face, the face muscles, the jaw. <laughs> and gently welcoming yourself into this space. Perhaps thanking your body for giving you the opportunity to sit, for being healthy enough. And thanking your mind for making this wise decision to cultivate the path. It's that consistency. Always putting a drop more in the jar of mindfulness, the jar of your good wholesome qualities. Everything gradually builds up. <clears throat> no moment of practice is wasted. Every moment is precious. An opportunity to care. And just recognizing that we're in the company of other practitioners, other people with the same beautiful intention to develop loving kindness as part of the path. Feeling safe, feeling welcome. Feeling at ease. <clears throat> Another aspect of loving kindness is giving others and giving yourself space. Space to be as you are. space to allow others to grow and to allow yourself to grow in your own time according to nature. It can't be any other way. And recognizing those beautiful wholesome qualities that are present in your heart. Maybe generosity or kindness, sincerity, honesty, If it's difficult for you to acknowledge your own goodness, then at least acknowledging your intentions, the purity of your intentions to develop wholesome qualities, wholesome states. And see if that can bring a sense of uplift and gladness to the heart. This is a wholesome happiness that the Buddha praised. Noticing any pleasant feelings associated with that. 
perhaps a feeling of warmth or tingling around the heart or the chest or anywhere else in your body. As you just rest with appreciation for your goodness. This is good enough, more than good enough to keep on deepening on the path. And staying connected to your body. If it helps, then maybe mentally reciting some phrases of well wishing toward yourself. Connecting with your deepest aspiration for your own well being. Perhaps connecting with qualities you wish to develop. For example, may I be happy? May I be content? May I be peaceful? May suffering end. And you may choose one phrase or up to four different phrases. But you'll notice I left a space between each phrase. Depending on your mind today, whether it's settled or slightly agitated, whether there's thinking already going on. You can repeat these phrases more frequently or less, but always allowing them to land so that the meaning impregnates or infuses the heart Words are only words, but where they're pointing to is the most important thing. So listening with your whole body between each phrase and allowing the mind to incline in that direction without any pressure or force. So just as in the breath meditation, the breath holds the mind, gives it a direction, something to rest upon. So in the metta meditation, we can use these phrases to help incline the mind towards the experience of loving kindness, a place for the mind to rest upon. and really meaning what you say, not allowing it to become automatic.
And allowing the mind to pick up any sensations in the body that are pleasant or neutral, maybe light or soft. Just receiving them. And allowing them to suffuse the whole body. And this helps the body to deeply relax. Finding that balance between the gentle persistence gently nudging the mind whilst also giving the mind the heart space to grow the meta space to develop in its own time not making any demands but just receiving the goodness of your own well wishes for yourself trusting the power of these intentions to gradually sink in and nourish the heart and mind over time
If this feels nourishing for you, you're welcome to continue to suffuse your own body and mind with loving kindness. Or perhaps you'd like to invite someone else into the metta. Someone who perhaps you have a feeling of gratitude towards. Devotion towards, friendliness towards. Someone special in your life who it's just very easy and natural to share this metta with. This person may be sitting right next to you or in this room, in this virtual room. Or it could be another person who's very dear to you in this life. Someone you have an uncomplicated relationship with so that the meta can just continue to flow. Imagining them there in front of you or by your side. Receiving the warmth of loving kindness. Relaxing, feeling at ease feeling loved. You can use the same phrases or you may wish to adapt your wishes of loving kindness just for them. Or if the mind, the heart is open, you may be able to set aside or verbalization and just suffuse them with love. Whatever works for you. Staying embodied, yet connected to the presence of this dear person in your life. And gently smiling into the eyes of this dear person. And letting them go for now. Whilst the metta continues the momentum and spreads to those who you're likely to meet today. Or those who live close by.
Sometimes people just pop into your mind. Allow that to be. Perhaps there's a reason that they need the metta. So just trust this natural organic process of metta spreading wherever it goes. And staying connected to your body, especially to any sensations associated with loving kindness. Again, maybe just a sense of relaxation or ease. Maybe a tingling in the chest, the hands, the face, or warmth. Anything that feels fairly pleasant or neutral. And just imagining these waves of metta flowing out in any direction you choose, just flowing, flowing, flowing across the country, the town, to the borders of your country and beyond. meeting beings along the way who you know and who are unknown to you, who are happy and who are suffering. Who are going about their daily business and those who are at home, maybe in the hospitals, And those who are caught up in terrible wars. Those who fear for their safety and even their life. All beings. Human or non-human. Near or far. Those who do good for others, who are kind, and those who behave unskillfully and cause harm, may all beings everywhere, in every direction, receive the power of our loving kindness. And for a moment, may that loving kindness soften their hearts. bringing healing to those who are sick, bringing happiness to those who suffer, and bringing kindness to heal all the harm and hurt that knowingly or unknowingly all beings at some time or another perpetuate. May all beings know loving kindness. May all beings be safe, be healed, be free.
And this loving kindness permeates every part of this planet Earth into the soil where the earthworms and other animals living underground dwell. To the rivers, the lakes, the oceans, and all the creatures of the sea. The fish, crocodiles, co corals, even sea snakes. <laughs> and all the birds, the beings who live in the sky, little insects, spiders hanging from their webs, all beings, invisible beings as well. The animals, whether small or large. And the mice and the rats, those we think of as pests. To the beautiful majestic elephants and tigers in the forests, in the plains. All beings. May they all receive the power of this loving kindness that spreads across the globe, leaving a golden glow, like very warm, gentle sunshine that shines impartially on all. Keeping this sense of boundlessness, of all embracing loving kindness, whilst also sensing yourself sitting in the room, sensing your body, your mind, your heart. And allowing yourself just to receive loving kindness as I chant the blessing to end the meditation. Sape Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha, Sabe Pugala, Sabe Atabawa Pariapana, Sabe Hitio, Sabe Purisa. Sabe Aria Sabe Anaria Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Winipadika I will hold to I be a paja hold to I need go hold to Sukiatanam Parihalam to Dukamonjan to 
Yada lada sampadito Maui gachantu Kama saka Sadu <laughs> Thank you to those on the video who do the big sadus as well. So I don't look like the only crazy nun. Well, the only crazy nun, but not the only crazy person on this Zoom. <laughs> very nice. Thank you very much for your practice. And I hope that your heart is a little softer and more relaxed. And if not, it doesn't matter because you've been cultivating wholesome thought and intention. So sometimes obstacles come up as well when we practice metta. And that's also very important because we see where we're blocked and we see those little places where we're a little bit harsh or fault finding or, you know, maybe if we find it hard to relax maybe our lives are a bit too stressful at the moment or whatever it might be but still you've offered yourself this opportunity to just realign with the path and hopefully that will bring a bit more kindness into your day especially into your dealings with whoever you come across even if that's only you <laughs> or your plants it doesn't matter because <laughs> we have to live with ourselves right so now we normally have a little check-in if anybody wishes to share um, you're also welcome to write comments in the box and please don't feel that because it's meta we have to be all happy and positive maybe that's not how you feel and that's fine as well so if you'd like to share or ask or comment on anything at all please either raise your virtual hand or just leave a little comment in the box it's always nice to hear from people. And I noticed Stephanie joined us as well since we began. I think maybe I didn't see you in the beginning, but it's nice to see you now. Um, very warm welcome, especially if it's your first time. There's quite a few new people here from all over the place, from Ohio all the way to Perth in Australia. <laughs> so it's just really fantastic that we have such a international group. So yeah, any anything people would like to share or ask about, it can be unrelated to Meta as well. It's just an opportunity to, uh, to share something of your practice. And no pressure at all. Last week, people said they were shy. <laughs> so they put some stuff in the chat box. And then when I said, actually, I like to hear your voice, suddenly they weren't shy anymore. And bit by bit... <laughs> <laughs> we had a really nice discussion, but we, we will be on time today because uh, I have some guests coming to offer the lunch. So we have 10 minutes or so if you wish to speak. Yeah. So one person says, I, I won't say your name because if it's in the box, I guess it might. I don't know if you want it to be confidential, but I'll keep it confidential. I find it very helpful to send kindness and compassion to my own inner obstacles and the places where I get stuck. Yeah, exactly. Especially if it's real kindness and compassion that doesn't want to cure those obstacles or kind of barge past the stuck places. If it's genuine kindness and compassion means you give them space as well, right? So just recognizing they arise from causes and they're here. There's nothing you can do to, you know, make it otherwise, but you can change the way you relate to those obstacles and challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. And it says it's so lovely to see you all. And someone else is saying it's been, I've been struggling with over control and trying to move more towards trust. It was lovely to focus on trust during this meditation after you spoke about trust. Lovely. That's great. It's amazing in these sessions that just putting out a few ideas or thoughts, uh, we pick up the bits that resonate for us. So I did mention trust, especially in terms of just guiding the mind, but then letting it, giving it the space, trusting that it will follow that suggestion. So, yeah, I think it's such an important part of the path. It's something akin to um, devotion or faith right trust i like the word trust actually for sadda for 
but what is often translated as confidence or faith. Because trust is a verb, it's something we can do, we can trust. We can't faith, right? but we can trust. So it's a more, um, sometimes a little bit more uh, tangible as a sort of movement of the mind. Lots of obstacles in today's practice could only, inverted commas, be compassionate, help to keep returning to the body beautiful. It's important to be embodied. And the compassion is even a little bit more profound, I would say, than the metta, precisely because it's in contact with those, the truth of suffering. So that's very skillful practice. You know, the metta, compassion is an aspect of metta. It's sort of how love responds to suffering. Um, so it's a very organic, beautiful, flexible quality of heart. And there are some people with their hands up, which is wonderful. So I'd like to come to John. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Perfectly. Good, good. That was a lovely meditation. I um, I felt very relaxed and calm. And um, and and, uh, but I I find that everything seems very internal to me. It's as if I can imagine all this, but I don't feel as if anything is going anywhere except inside me. So maybe, I don't know whether it's meant to go outside me or what, but I find it all very internal. I mean, it, I'm, I'm very much in my head and not so much in my feelings. So I don't know whether you can pass any comment on that. I think that's pretty common, especially in the beginning of the practice that, you know, it starts off in the head, it starts off as a kind of beautiful intention that you is genuine, you know, and, and that you are cultivating within. And bit by bit, it starts to sort of sink down into the heart. And I think you're already expressing some of the qualities that I would recognize as the emotional aspects of loving kindness. You said it was peaceful, and you felt more easeful and relaxed. So even though that might not feel like uh a quality or like an experience of loving kindness it actually is which is why i say that loving kindness isn't necessarily a certain sensation type or a certain emotion it's just the things that are associated with that feeling of acceptance and ease so i would say it is going it is sinking in for you and you're coming out feeling more um relaxed and that embodiment of relaxation will affect those around you whether you like it or not you know mm -hmm. i'm looking at you now and i feel that you're relaxed and i feel kind of at ease and it's nice to talk to you and other people are going to feel that as well so you know we don't have to worry too much about how it manifests it's kind of beyond us really to make it this way or that so i think just carry on um you know if you're leaving the meditation feeling even a tiny bit more relaxed than when you began then something's working you know, you wouldn't get that by watching cricket. Well, you might, I don't know, <laughs> but it's unlikely, right, to notice a qualitative shift in the emotions and in the, the, the sense of embodiment doing other things. So I think it's quite powerful and it's an ongoing practice. Bit by bit, you will start to notice that people around you respond uh, to that. So, yeah, it starts in the mind. The Buddha said everything starts within. So it's okay when it's internal. It will come out. Okay. People will feel it. Mm. <laughs> I'll stop trying to think about it so much and just yeah. let it be. Don't worry. It's the trust, isn't it, again? It's the trust. Okay, yeah. sweet. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And Colleen, can we come to Colleen? Yeah, hi. Um I forgot to change the name, but I'm Felix. Um, I thought so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this uh, wonderful meditation. Um, uh, there was something I wanted to ask um, this morning. Uh, so it was a very uh, tiring week for me, so I felt tired. And as I wanted to, you know, uh, wake up and stand, stand up and prepare all the things to join this Zoom and do the meditation. I, I also um, asked myself um, if it would not be better to just um, sleep uh, and stay in bed as an act of uh, meta for myself. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, trouble discerning what was the most uh, 
skillful things to do. So I was wondering uh, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, it depends how you feel now, I guess, as to whether it was the right choice to come. But um, I think different things at different times, and it's a really great question that only oneself can answer, really. I think it's important to allow yourself to experiment and make mistakes, you know, because it will depend from time to time. And this morning I did the same thing, actually. I mean, now I'm here guiding the meta and I felt like I could also get into the flow and practice the meta as well it's really beautiful sometimes to teach because you feel something sort of comes through and i'm actually practicing as i teach but this morning i did skip my meditation my formal sitting meditation because i was really really tired and even though i woke up in time there was this thing like okay do i stay in bed or do i get up and meditate and i decided to just lie in bed and rest the body and do a little bit of meditation which wasn't as deep as it could have been but I don't know I just I just try it and I don't analyze it too much afterwards you know um next time I might do something else so I think it's good to be experimental and to to find out what works and it's even good that you're asking the question my teacher Ajahn Brown once told me he said uh, uh the most important thing especially I guess in my leadership role when or for anyone who has a really busy challenging life is first sleep then eat then meditate because we do need to be rested, you know, uh, the state of mind we carry around with us is so different when we're tired compared to when we're rested. Um, so it is one of the basic human needs. And then obviously to nourish yourself well with food, these are privileges, right? That we, hopefully everyone here has. Um, and then from that place, it's much, much easier to, to meditate. So we need food for the body and food for the mind, yeah. I hope that helps a little bit without giving you a direct answer. <laughs> yeah, it was really helpful. Thank you. Excellent. Great. And lastly, we'll come to Sean and then I'll I'll just read through the comments in the box. So we'll finish more or less on time. Hello. Thank you. Hi. That uh, was a lovely meditation um, and a little bit different to, to a lot of the meditations I've done. And it's more really a comment, I'd say, since what a past month or so that I've been doing these meditations that you and Ajahn Brahan do, uh, so, and just thank you for putting them online. Um, I, what's very notable, because I've been meditating for years, is the way you look inwardly. And there's this kind of thought that initially, well, you should be, it's about everyone. But what I've realized, and it's filtered into my daily life, is that before you're kind to yourself, you can't really be kind to anyone else. And when you're for example, seeing faults or people, you're getting frustrated with others, it, it's within yourself. Uh, so just to say that, yeah, I've, I've very much noticed and then I've, I'm every now and again getting these insights into my daily life um, from the meditation. So, yeah, thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it up. Wonderful. Thank you for your practice and for your insights that, and also for sharing them because it's really lovely to hear that. And uh, I think it just confirms things for others a little bit as well you know that yeah the more kindness we have inside the more we can be kind to others and especially when we get familiar with the um things inside that we're not so pleased with right our own struggles and obstacles when we can learn to be compassionate to those then we have a lot more compassion when we see those in others and it kind of bridges that sense of i don't know separation that sometimes we erroneously have um and it makes us realize that yeah all human beings have a mind and it's capable of you know the kind of extremes and everything in between so i think it's just so powerful to start to understand the mind and it isn't our mind it's just you know a process of cause and effect so the more we get familiar with that and learn to handle that kindly gently with patience then the more we can do that for others as well we can hold the space for them so it's not separate. Yeah, wonderful. And just to also thank you for thanking the team who put all the teachings online. Matthias is one of them. <laughs> uh, you've been doing most of the work, Matthias, along with Paul for this uh, last retreat. So that's it's really helpful because a lot of the stuff's not, you, you know, the other stuff I've followed in Buddhism, they don't put really much online. It's very difficult. Yeah. Right, means, right. With our busy lives today, makes it more accessible and then that makes us make more time for it as well so thank you oh that's a great um yeah that's great bit of feedback 
because it is one of our charitable aims to spread the teachings and make them accessible. So this is why we do that. I think I'm really pleased that we can. And it's a platform that we have now, you know, we have quite a lot of subscribers. And so I can also invite other guest teachers and other bikunis. And it's wonderful. I think it's just such a, a good resource. So great that you appreciate. Thank you. And I'll just go through the last couple of comments. I think they're just comments, but they're very lovely. Uh, so this happened quite often. I think that's the obstacles there. Oh, sorry, that I suddenly lost in thoughts, even though it was so beautiful and warm for a while. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course, we do get lost in thoughts, but we can always bring the mind back to the wholesome thoughts. And that's one of the qualities of this kind of meta practice, too, that it directly works with thought. So if you do find that you're lost in thoughts that aren't taking you in a particularly helpful direction, which is normal because you would be anyway, right? <laughs> it's not regress. Like this is what your mind would be doing all the time without meditation. We can actually replace those thoughts with another thought of meta. So we just remember, oh, actually, may I be happy? May I be well? Uh, so wonderful. Yes, it was beautiful and warm for a while. And that's wonderful. The Buddha said that even if you can develop loving kindness for a finger snap, you're practicing the point. You're a disciple of his. So, and it's very powerful to break through those habit patterns that we have. Love to shine the warmth to those distracting thoughts in the end. Excellent. Thank you so much. So you actually practice meta towards the thoughts themselves as well. So fantastic. What a wonderful start in the weekend. Came in late to join and still in my pyjamas. Yay! <laughs> that means you're comfy, hopefully. <laughs> and there was your voice saying that every minute we practice is worthwhile and beautiful. Thank you so much for the lovely welcome to this day and to this Sangha. Love you all. Love to all. Yay! Thank you very much, Stephanie, for joining. Even though you were so called late, but doesn't matter, right? You just take what you get. <laughs> and thank you for your lovely smile bringing lots of joy to the group and to everyone here i also feel it's a great start to the weekend and i leave feeling a lot happier than when i began so thank you so much oh i think someone's supposed to say a few words shell isn't it we're inviting you to do your premiere <laughs> on our zoom session so yeah thank Just you very it. much venerable um, so yeah, thank you so much for leading us through that lovely meta meditation and giving us all the opportunity to ground ourselves and take the time to sit together in meta on this cold icy morning uh, over here in the UK. So um, I just wanted to say a few words about Dana. Uh, Venerable Chanda and the Anukampa Bhikkhuni project offer these sessions in the spirit of Dana. So they're freely given for us all to access the Buddha's teachings and words. So we can offer dana in return to Venerable Chanda and the project um, in many different ways. Um, we're particularly supporting Venerable in setting up the Vihara, which I was very honoured to spend last weekend at. Um, so you are able to offer dana in the form of meals, uh, or alternatively send in veg boxes um, or other items. There's a list of items, things that are needed for the Vihara, which I think Derek or one of the other co-hosts are kindly going to send through in the chat box a link to that. Um, you'll also see a calendar of dates of where uh, meals are needed. So you may offer up meals perhaps once a month or more regularly or just a one-off. Um, Additionally, um, we're also asking for uh, some gift vouchers just to support uh, Venerable in getting some new furniture and things like that uh, for the Vihara uh, at the moment. Um, and there's also going to be a link to donate directly to the Anacampa Bikini Project. Too. Um, Venerable also needs some help in person at the Vihara, so wonderful Linda is with her at the moment. I was there last weekend and I think there's some other people on the call that will be going to serve with Venerable Chanda. Um, and it's as in her monastic rules, she has to refrain from things such as cooking for herself, um, but also as well as needing help in running the Vahara itself. It's a big house um, and even for one person, not even being a nun, it would be quite a lot to take on. So just to have that extra support in the house for the day-to-day -day run ins of it too. So please do get in touch if you can give up your time. There'll be an email address in the chat box too. I think it's the team at Anacampa 
project.org. Uh, Derek's nodding. Great, got that right. Um, and we're inviting people to stay at the Vihara for a few nights um, at first, at least I think it's three or four nights minimum, just so that there's not too many people coming and going all the time. Um, but obviously, if you want to come and stay for a bit longer as well, um, you'll be able to sort that out too. And I hope I've just done the Dana talk justice as that was my first time doing it. <laughs> so. It's incredible. Yes, beautiful, beautifully done. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's really lovely that you've got this golden sunlight on your face as well. <laughs> Very sweet. Thank you so much support. I feel the support just in your words. So thank you to everybody who's here and yeah always welcome to come along you can also offer meals remotely so i know that you know it's not part of our culture to drive for like two hours <laughs> to offer a meal for half an hour in the middle of the day um unless you've retired or i don't know have some other sort of privileged uh job so yeah it is possible to do it remotely as well so and we'd love to see you here eventually we will have a couple of open days as well in the new year so Great. I think we will close for today. And um, we usually unmute everyone so that we can hear your lovely voices as you wave goodbye. So please take care and keep that sense of loving kindness towards yourself. Yeah. Take care. <laughs>